ports are the heart of our global trade, connecting the world and fueling economic growth. But with this power comes a problem. Ports have a massive carbon footprint. Even prior to its recent merger with Antwerp, Zeebrugge port in Belgium handled more cars than any other in the world. The large ships that dock here generate their electricity by burning fuel. But soon they'll be able to connect to clean energy from new wind turbines. A more sustainable solution that's perfect for the windiest area of Belgium. The first wind turbines ever in Europe were located here in Zeebrugge. So we have always been a pioneer on that side. These 54 wind turbines, they uh, supply 100,000 of uh, households with uh, green energy. Of course, a lot of this energy gets consumed by the terminals and the companies directly, uh, which makes sure that they can perform actually a lot of their activities without emitting uh, CO2. The merged port of Antwerp and Bruges, one of the largest in Europe, aims to become one of the most sustainable ports in the world. The Antwerp Euro terminal has switched to LED lighting, covered roofs with solar panels, washes containers and cars with collected rainwater, and all that on top of the wind power. The wind in Antwerp isn't very consistent, and the sun doesn't always shine. But the terminal copes with that by using new battery storage, part of the Pioneers project backed by the European Union. The managing director says the terminal now gets 86% of its energy from green sources. We immediately see the effect by using uh, renewable energy because the electricity prices went sky high in the past year. So we immediately are benefiting from all the efforts we are doing. Our customers are asking to, um, uh, to show our ecological footprint. So if there is not bu no business case today, tomorrow it will be a business case. So I think and I hope that we will be ready. The port of Antwerp Bruges is responsible for 4.5% of Belgium's GDP and provides over 160,000 jobs through its cargo terminals, distribution centres and Europe's biggest chemical cluster. But its CO2 emissions amount to 17 million tonnes each year and the goal is to become carbon neutral by 2050. We have a, a huge uh, carbon problem here. We are, uh, let's say, uh, more than 10% of carbon footprint of Belgium. We are a highly energy intensive platform with a lot of uh, fuel needs, a lot of electricity needs, feedstock needs and heat needs. Of course, our main ambition is then to uh, remain the, the same world-class uh, competitive uh, platform, but with a net zero impact uh, on the long term. Capturing, storing and reusing industry-generated carbon dioxide is one solution. Another is shifting from fossil fuels to alternatives like hydrogen that can be produced with renewable energy sources to be CO2 neutral. The port aims to become an international hub for green hydrogen. The PSA terminal is already experimenting with alternative fuels. Containers here are moved by more than 100 diesel-powered straddle carriers that produce substantial emissions. As part of the Pioneers project, the terminal and its partner CMB Tech are upgrading one carrier with a hybrid system that combines diesel with hydrogen to reduce overall emissions. The experiment will show how the technology can be scaled up. So the, the method that we are uh, demonstrating here is what we call dual fuel uh, technology. So we actually mix hydrogen and diesel into the existing engine. The dual fuel application allows us to use the existing machines, but it also allows us to gradually build up the hydrogen infrastructure. We don't have that today, and that means that if there is a problem in the supply of hydrogen, we still have the option to fall back to diesel. Coordinated at the port of Antwerp, Bruges, the Pioneers project also involves the ports of Barcelona in Spain, Constanta in Romania and Venlo in the southern Netherlands. The goal is to showcase strategies for decreasing environmental impact while staying competitive, in line with the objectives of the European Green Deal. Inga de Wolf is the project coordinator. Each port offers um, a unique port ecosystem uh, where we can learn from each other, also through the interaction with the port community, port stakeholders. We will be focusing, for example, on uh, clean energy production and supply, sustainable port design. 
We will also be looking at the modal flows, uh, modal shift flows optimization of both goods and passengers, and also digital tra transformation. So by the end of the project, we have the ambition to deliver um, a green port master plan that can be used for ports um, across Europe and beyond. Digital technologies can enhance port efficiency, leading to a decrease in pollution and waste. Real-time data is available through cameras, air quality sensors and other devices positioned throughout the port. Semi-autonomous drones use machine learning algorithms to detect floating litter or oil spills. The Port Authority can respond promptly to any source of air pollution, be it an industrial site or a vessel. Ships too are being digitalized. CFAR, another project participant, equips inland vessels with cameras and other sensors so they can be controlled remotely. These captains steer their ships by looking at screens in the office. A more comfortable way to work that also has environmental benefits, as CFAR R&D project manager Gazale Kia explains. When we have all the information collected, all the data collected from the devices, one thing that we can provide is the road optimization and the speed of optimization. When we have these options available, then we have fuel consumption reduction, and as a result, there will be less carbon footprints and more green cargo. Last but not least, lorries, cargo trains and employees' cars all contribute to the overall pollution that affects those living in port cities. Antwerp's goal is for at least half of its inhabitants to use sustainable transport. The city is working with the Port Authority, which has invested 40 million euros to connect all companies in the port area to safe cycle paths. The close ties between port and city are reflected in the collection at the MAS Museum, where project leader Stephen Windy tells us about the city of Antwerp's vision for green commuting. It's very clear that the port is part of the city, of course, especially when we are talking about mobility. Within a period of 10 years, more or less, every company site in the port will get a uh, cycle path until the gate of their own company site. We want to make the city more active, more smart and more attainable and more livable. The industry is only starting its journey towards the greener ports of the future where emissions are reduced and the economy maintained. But with Europe aiming for climate neutrality by 2050, the target is clear.